Okay, mm -hmm. Ilona, welcome on the show. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Alejandro. Great to be here and be one of the pioneers on your uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you. You're one of the few, the few <laughs> first frontliners. All right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, uh, so uh, my name is Ilona Vega, uh, and I work on the business development team for the Miami Downtown Development Authority. Um, the Miami Downtown Development Authority is an independent agency of the city of Miami. Uh, it is nonprofit and is publicly funded. And, uh, and the mission of this organization is to grow, strengthen, and promote the economic vitality of downtown Miami. Um, it's a mouthful, but the agency does a lot. So you guys are not part of the city, but part of the city. Can you, can you explain that connection? Yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Good question. Uh, so yeah, we are 100% funded through property taxes, right? There is a millage rate that uh, we receive funding from through all the downtown property owners, whether you own a condo or you own a building, uh, and everybody pays property taxes, and we get a millage rate that funds the agency. And so we act independently because we have a 15-member board that consists of one of the elected commissioners, and the other 14 are... Um, well, actually, there's, other, there's two other public sector representatives, somebody that represents the state and somebody that represents the county. And the other 13 or 12 members, I'm sorry, are from the private sector. And we act independently because we get to decide ourselves what uh, we use uh, the funds of the Miami DDA, uh, what we're going to allocate funds towards uh, as it pertains to downtown Miami. Exactly. Okay, cool. So you guys are specifically focused in the downtown. So you use those monies that you guys receive to develop the downtown area. Correct. And what, what, what area is the downtown area? Okay, so downtown Miami, as per our definition, includes three different neighborhoods. It includes the financial district, which is Brickell Avenue. Uh, and uh, then you could just go north of the river and then you are in the central business district. And then just when you're in front of the American Airlines Arena begins the Arts and Entertainment District, which goes up to Northeast 22nd Street. Uh, so our district does not include Midtown. It does not include Wynwood Design District. Um, and in a, it's not a perfect rectangle, but basically we cover everything that is due west of Biscayne Bay and due east of I-95. Is there a lot of confusion with Wynwood and to see if you guys are part of that? Because they're popular names now. It's, yes. it's, they're very hot places to, to start a business, to, to live now. So. Yes, and, and they're, we're competing with them. So as Wynwood begins to develop and they're starting to see some you know, commercial office space being developed there, and it never existed before, right? Um, and so we used to consider Wynwood kind of like added value and we would like encourage them to be allocated in our demographics. Uh, but now they're starting to be a competitor because we, um, you know, they're taking some of the businesses that we want into downtown uh, into their community. So yes, there is, there is a tremendous amount of confusion. And so that is why we spend a lot of time trying to explain to people uh, how our district is defined um, and, and who actually we are representing. Got it. Got it. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. And so it's always so important uh, for us to make sure that we are investing back within our district and not outside of it. So when we're partnering with organizations and putting on events or uh, supporting them in some way, that's such an important piece of the puzzle. They have to be within our district. Got it. So how do you, how do you bring or promote downtown? How do you bring business? How do you promote downtown? What are, what, are, what are those main functions? Okay, so, uh, you know, I can't think of a more exciting city to be representing right now. Um, well, you know, we're in COVID, so everything, the world has changed. Uh, but, you know, when we get back to normal and, uh, and pre-COVID, um, 
you know, I honestly believe that Miami and, and downtown Miami has to be the most exciting city out there. I mean, really. Um, I know that for a fact uh, when I'm talking about the state of Florida, because I used to work for the uh, state of Florida economic development organization called Enterprise Florida. I, you, I worked there for 11 years and, and I know the state pretty well. And so I, am, I know that Miami is, is the hot city in, in Miami, it's in, in Florida. It, it's just so exciting um, to see the transformation uh, that we've all seen of our city over the last decade has been phenomenal. And all of the exciting projects that we have seen come live, beginning with Brickell City Center, uh, then going on to the uh, Miami Central Station um, and seeing the Frost Science Museum, the Perez Art Museum. You know, all of these mega projects are just creating such an unbelievable, exciting downtown environment. And, uh, and so I get to promote that. And so I use all of these new assets on, and, uh, and let me not forget about uh, Miami World Center, which is, you know, in the process of, of being developed, right? Um, you know, and so I get to use all of these news, new assets that we're experiencing in our community um, and to be able to share, share them with people looking for another location, whether they're looking to uproot and relocate their business from, a, you know, a very high tax state, uh, which, we're getting a lot of traction from firms in, in states that, that high, have traditional high taxes. Like New York? Uh, like New York, like Connecticut, like New Jersey, Illinois, California. I mean, the list goes on. People are just fed up. And, out, and with the pandemic, they're just even more fed up. And so uh, people are looking for alternative locations, whether it's to begin with a small footprint tomorrow and eventually grow and then grow their footprint and start reducing their footprint and the other uh, where they are now. Um, that, those are the kind, kinds of conversations that I'm having. And I basically am telling them about all of these unbelievable amenities that our city is seeing come live uh, recently. Uh, there's a lot of products that are still uh, underway. Uh, like, uh, for example, this uh, behind me, you see this wonderful, like it's, it's a sidewalk. Uh -huh. that, is, um, that is called the Bay Walk, and it's going to be a continuous sidewalk all along Biscayne Bay. Um, and, you know, we hope to be able to see that come to life, um, you know, soon in the next couple of years, um, which is just another added bonus to living in downtown or, or to, to being able to work in a city like downtown. Okay. So walk, walk us through the journey. Let's say I am from New York. And I'm interested in Miami. And then we meet, or I meet you in one of your, your delegation's visits to New York. W what are the steps? I want to go to Miami. I'm, I'm connected with you. What's next? Okay. So, uh, so we're, off to the, we're, you know, we're off to the races, right? Uh, so first, you know, exactly. First, you know, I would want us to know, are, you know, do you have plans to come visit Miami? Anytime in the future, you know, I, I would want to be able to host you uh, and help you, um, you know, create an agenda for you, a program, so you can meet the other kinds of businesses that are here that would entice you to move here. Um, I ask you, you know, what kind of business are you in? Uh, and depending on your answer, then I try to provide you all the information that would be relevant uh, for you to know who else is here. Are your competitors here? Are your uh, service providers here? Um, what is the talent? What are your talent requirements? Um, what, uh, where can I uh, point you towards in developing that talent that is going to uh, help you and your firm grow your business and your, your footprint here in Miami and, you know, throughout the market? Um, talk to you about, uh, you know, your residential needs. Are you somebody that is looking to live in a home? that might not be in downtown, or are you more, uh, more uh, looking towards living in a condominium? Um, perhaps you want to rent at first. So, you know, I, I try to get to know you and I try to get to understand your needs. And, uh, and then I provide you all the information that I have available to me um, to make you, you know, to start educating you as what the market looks like here and, uh, and, you know, it's important for me not to overwhelm you, right? I don't want to dump a bunch of data and statistics on you that is just going to confuse you and it's not, it, not going to help you. So I try to 
get a very clear understanding of what your needs are. And then I follow up with, uh, with information that is pertinent to you and to your situation. Um, and then of course, uh, based on that, you know, the, the way it usually goes is that you have the opportunity to review the information, uh, you know, um, get some questions. And then, uh, and then you say, okay, listen, it all looks good to me. I, I'm, I'm flying down in two weeks. Um, you know, I, let's meet and can you set up uh, some meetings for me with a firm, uh, with a firm that might be a competitor or a, 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 a someone that is a service provider so they can tell me um, about the market and what it looks like down here. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I can obviously can fill, facilitate introductions for you with, uh, with brokers, real estate, or, uh, or, or, or office commercial brokers uh, so that you can start seeing what's available and what it could look like for your firm being down here. Great. And, and so, yeah, I'm like your, uh, you know, your friendly neighborhood uh, girl who is your boots on the ground and helping you um, take the leap. Great. And I'm assuming you also help with some schooling issues, helping. Well, we, exactly. So, you know, that a lot of people, one of the primary um, priorities, right, of moving is having access to good schools. And so we try to facilitate introductions. Uh, with directly with schools, um, you know, as per their requirement, whether they're public or they're private. Uh, of course, it all depends on where they might live at the end. Uh, and so, so we try to uh, customize all of the information that we provide and facilitate those introductions in any way that we can. Perfect. I have to say that I recently had a uh, podcast interview with Gary from Axpire and LSG. Oh, yeah. and he he primarily spoke about the DDA and you, and the quality of service was on point. I think that I think that we can have the we can have the assets, we can have the resources, but if there's not someone that's on top that that can that's there to connect you with a friendly face, the energy, like like you've done for this man, um, I think that that's important. I think that's very important. So he was very happy with the way that Miami received his business and how the whole process went. He would mention that he would text you at whatever time and he would be like, oh, and then you're responding. So it's, it's that kind of energy that really makes a difference. I you know, I, I, I believe so. I, and I'm a, fir I'm a firm believer in that. And I'm so happy that Gary said that, you know, because he is, he's one of my, he is one of my clients and I'm, and, uh, and I try to, respond immediately and and like i said i'm really sensitive about being able to respond with pertinent information um you know we all you know we all want to move somewhere where we feel welcome where we feel that we're going to succeed where we feel that it's not going to be a hurdle to meet people to get us to where we need our business to go and and with that in mind is how i approach my job you know, I, I'm, I'm the friendly face here and, and it's my job to try to help any newcomer be as successful as they can. Um, and, and that's my priority. That's the way I see it. So before we continue about the DDA, why don't we dive a little bit more uh, about you and where you're from? You're not originally from Miami. Yeah, so I, I, I love telling the story. So thank you for the, for the setup. Uh, so I grew up in Tampa, Florida. And, uh, and I swore I was never, ever, ever going to live in Miami. I remember vividly saying that. This is, you know, I graduated in high school in the 80s, 80, 1986 is when I graduated. And, uh, all, you know, I knew about Miami, what everybody else knows, right? You know, Miami Vice. And then there was all those, like, that, that era of when all the tourists were getting lost near the airport on the way to the cruises and they would get shot. I mean, the stories of Miami were <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, who would ever live in Miami? That place is crazy. So of course I graduated from high school and I wanted to go to the big city because I'm a big city girl. And I went to college in Philadelphia. And after Philadelphia, I ended up moving to New York because I didn't want to go back to Tampa. And Yada, 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 flash forward. 
um, to, uh, I was finishing up my grad school in New York and it was 1994. And, uh, and I was studying international affairs with a specialized focus on Latin America. And, uh, and my lease ran out in New York. And I said, well, you know, wow, am I going to start my career in New York? And, you know, I'm going to become a, I'm going to, I'm really going to become a New Yorker. I mean, I was just kind of transient there for four years. But um, I said, you know what, this could be my chance to just kind of get out of the jungle of New York and cut my losses and figure out where life takes me. So I, I shipped all my boxes home to Tampa and I was in Tampa and my parents home for a couple months and it just turned out that the summit of the Americas was happening in Miami in December 1994. You're too young to remember, of course, but um, for me, that was yeah, like, such, <laughs> it was a huge turning point because I was in Tampa without a job and I studied international relations with a focus on Latin America. So the summit of the Americas was calling my name. I mean, it was, it was just the stars were aligned. It was destiny, right? Because the summit of the Americas was the first time every head of state of Latin America had been democratically elected. So it was like the dawn of a new beginning. And uh, all the heads of state met in Miami. Um, you know, the, the federal government came down. It was just, it was a huge thing. So, um, so I'm, I came and volunteered in Miami in December. And then I, I moved, I drove down with my car and my suitcase in January. And I've been here ever since, believe it or not. And so um, I've been here since, since that time. And I've, you know, Miami's such... A dynamic city. It's changed so many times since I've been here. Every, I mean, every, every time I'd turn my head, something new was there. There was some new activity happening. and New building. Uh, yeah, new building. Um, you know, just a new business, a new uh, brand for Miami. And uh, it's just, just kind of the city, the kind of city it is. It's constantly reinventing itself and and uh, from having sworn I was never, ever, ever going to live here to now loving it, <laughs> it's been quite a journey. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've been here for more than half my life, so it's always good to hear these stories of how people end up here. Um, yeah, um, it is. So now continuing with DDA, does the DDA charge for any of these services? Zero. The uh, Miami Downtown Development Authority is nonprofit, so we have absolutely no uh, no fee for all of our services. And are there any limitations to who you take? It could be mom pop shops to massive corporations. You know, you know our job. You know my job. So I work in the business development team, and okay. you know more jobs the merrier, right? So if I have if I have a, a business that's going to create a hundred jobs and another business that's going to create two jobs. I have to help both of them because we're publicly funded. You know, I can't, I, you know, we're, we're publicly funded and we can't, we can't uh, ignore, you know, when people are asking us for help. So we have to help both of them. We, we want to help both of them. Obviously the hundred job client might get a little bit more of attention but, uh, but I in no means would reject the other client look at sure. that creating two jobs. You know, I, I have to do whatever I can uh, to, to assist them as well. We do, you know, that in mind, you know, we do have targeted industries because, you know, we want a lot of jobs, and, but we want a lot of high paying jobs, right? You know, part of our, our reason for being is to facilitate economic growth. And as you know, downtown is not affordable to many people and to many jobs in Miami. So um, in order for us to keep this ecosystem rolling along, you know, smoothly and with a lot of fluidity, we need a lot of people who have a lot of high wage jobs to, you know, to come and, and be in downtown because they're the ones who can afford the rent, they can afford the, con the, the condos, they can afford to go to all the restaurants. They can afford to go to the arts. So it makes sense. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, I look at it all within that prism, 
right? You know, I have priorities and, and we have a wish list, but we never turn away a client. And your, your role in the development team, you mentioned to me earlier that you focus specifically on finance. Well, uh, you know, funny, funny Alejandro, as you know, life kind of throws curveballs. And when I was hired at the DDA, it was uh, October uh, 2016, right? The, the presidential elections were held November 2016. And I was hired with a focus on developing international business because that was my experience. So it's everything. And so, <laughs> so I started and, you know, the elections happened and Trump was elected. And as you know, everything was about, the focus was really about bringing back jobs. Uh, and it was about focusing on domestic economy uh, versus international. And so my role kind of evolved over the course of these four years. And uh, my focus has been, it ended up being finance and domestic finance firms. That became my focus because that was what we needed. Because, because internationally, um, uh, we just weren't seeing uh, all, you know, we weren't seeing that much traction of uh, international investors coming in and the whole thing with China. Um, I did go to China twice representing the Miami Downtown Development Authority and it's just, it was just the wrong timing. You know, maybe yeah. in the future there might be opportunities, but, uh, but right now the focus uh, has really been domestic U.S. business. And in my case, it's been really evolved uh, to focus uh, finance, the finance sector, because uh, we call, you know, Brickell Avenue, we call it the Miami, the financial district, uh, also known as Wall Street South. And we're getting uh, quite a bit of momentum, not only because of the 2017 tax overhaul um, that put a limit on the amount of, uh, uh, of uh, payments or tax deferrals you can make on your mortgage payment of your home, um, that which ended up, uh, in, uh, it ended up encouraging a lot of these high net worth individuals who were paying for very expensive homes in, you know, high tax states, it was no longer attractive for them to be living there. So they started looking at uh, declaring their domicile in the state of Florida back in 2017 after that tax overhaul. And the momentum had just continued to roll uh, so that uh, we're getting so much um, energy and so much activity from, uh, from that sector and not just from New York and the Northeast, uh, but we're starting to see it from all over the country really. That's great. What? It is. It's, it's our time. This, this is our time. This is our time to capture as much business we can bring them down to Miami. This is, this is the great city you want to be in right now. So you can save money and, and no snow. And, and no snow and spectacular, you know, quality of life. Uh, you know, look at my background. You can just go to the beach, hop, you know, hop on a bike and ride to the beach. I mean, how lucky is that? Uh, Biscayne Bay has got to be one of the most spectacular, um, you know, uh, recreational venues. Uh, yeah. I, I can never get enough of it. So what are these perceptions that you spend a lot of time breaking down for people? Or do you people don't that? take Miami seriously as a business location. Uh, you'd, you'd be amazed. It's, it's shocking. You know, I go to New York and I'm talking to people, you know, finance fund managers, and all they know of Miami is Miami Beach. And I say, well, you know, have you've never been to downtown? Like, no, never. And they go every year. They go every year to Miami Beach because there's a huge conference uh, at the end of January. It happens every year, context, and every fund manager anywhere in the United States goes to that. And it's a perfect excuse to take a vacation and, uh, and get some sun during the winter. I can't tell you how many people tell me that they have never been to downtown Miami and I'm in shock. And, uh, and so I try, I try to say, well, you know, next time you come to Miami, cause you seem to come here a lot. Why don't you just, 
you know, drive over the, the bridge, come visit me. I invite you. I'll invite you to my office. I'll take you out to lunch. I'll take you on a tour, a, a customized, bespoke tour of downtown Miami, and you would be amazed. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, that's a challenge to people, to get people to actually do that. It's just outside of what their, you know, their expectations are, what their plans are. Uh, you know, when I went to China, I find it hilarious. Everybody I met uh, could associate Miami with Miami Vice. They said to me, they love Miami Vice. Uh, they, and, and they just can't wait to come here and visit because it's all about Miami Vice. And I'm like, Miami Vice, that was like, you know, 40 years ago. That's a different Miami. And that Miami Vice no longer is what our Miami is about. <laughs> You know, and it's, it's just hilarious. People have these ideas and no matter where I go, it's, it's always just shocking to me. And so, um, you know, my, I spent a lot of time trying to con convey to people that Miami is a serious city with serious businesses. There's a lot of capital that sits in Miami, right? Uh, so, you know, we are the Cap, the financial capital of Latin America. There is so much capital from the region that sits in Miami, whether it's, it's, it's in, in, in a real estate investment in Miami or there's a fund manager managing that capital from Miami um, or it's, it's invested in another way. I mean, that capital is, is, it feeds our financial sector here. And a lot of people are just not aware that there is a tremendous amount of capital uh, in Miami for that reason. And there's the sector, it includes, you know, a lot of service providers that, uh, that make money off, this, off of service, you know, servicing uh, those funds. So it's big business. It's big business for us. And and uh, it's an industry that is um, very compatible with uh, the kind of, um, you know, ecosystem we're trying to build here. And uh, I do believe that, you know, Wall Street South is, is really about to get um, some serious um, businesses coming here and, and taking us to another level that is going to get the attention of, of what people in Wall Street that never, you know, really take it too seriously. It's awesome. Now, I don't want to keep you too long. I know that we're running out of time. I have one more question. I know that you guys travel and do delegations. The recent ones I remember is you guys going to New York and trying to capture those, those New Yorkers to come down to Miami and enjoy our sunshine and our less taxes. Uh, is there any other places you guys go in the United States and outside or do you guys focus? What's, what's the focus? Okay, so we uh, traditionally we were always focused on the Northeast because uh, the finance initiative started with the focus on hedge funds. Mm -hmm. This goes back to a cup, uh, I guess in the early, right after the great recession, there was, we were getting a lot of interest from hedge funds, uh, particularly in the Northeast. And that's how the finance initiative started with, with, with trips to the Northeast. And then when I started, uh, I picked up where my predecessors left off and I continued going to the Northeast. We continued our partnership with the hedge fund association. Uh, we held several Miami and Manhattan networking events at the rooftop and Midtown, um, New Manhattan and uh, playing salsa and, you know, serving pastelitos, you know, croquetas. You've uh, got to show them all the, the beauty. Of, of absolutely. Oh yeah, we absolutely. And there was all those networking events were always a hit. And I always came back. You'd be amazed how many people came to me giving me their resume, like, get me a job, get me out of New York, get me a job back in Miami. I'm dying to go to Miami. Uh, and so thankfully I work with a, a headhunter here. And so I'm filtering her, all these, you know, CVs that I'm getting all the time. And then, uh, and then last year we actually decided to expand our horizons and we decided to, you know, take a look at Chicago, right? Because our, the relationships that Miami has is really with the Northeast, you know, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, and we really don't have that many connections with Chicago because the Midwesterners tend to stay on the west coast of Florida. So we ventured, we were, you know, we said, let's try something new, went to Chicago, 
And it was, we got tremendous response in Chicago. Um, and so we believe there's, there is opportunity in Chicago. And so our intention was to go back to Chicago, build on those connections that we made last year and make more connections, uh, but COVID got in the way. But it, it is definitely a focus. Uh, and of course, California, you know, California is a little further out. So I think it might be a little more difficult because a, that's a big move, right? From California, from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, Californians tend to go to Texas or Nevada, you know, closer to them. But, um, but uh, we're, you know, I, I think, you know, we need to explore. We need to explore and, and people in California are, are really getting fed up with their tax situation as well, the quality of life. Uh, I keep reading articles about uh, people from Silicon Valley and San Francisco just uh, taking advantage of this remote work and just uprooting themselves and moving to uh, for better quality of life. And this could be Florida and Miami's opportunity as well. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us on the show and for taking the time to, to meet me at this time <laughs> to talk about Miami and the Downtown Development Authority. So if you're listening, you know that the DDA is there to serve you and you can reach out to Ilona. I'll put some information in the show notes so they can reach out and uh, get to know how you can come to Miami, how you can bring your business and enjoy, enjoy our beautiful weather. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank All right, thank you Alejandro. <laughs>